Hello, hello everyone. Hello, Heavy and everybody. Welcome to our marathon. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Welcome to Change Education Around the World. And today, yes, we have a special guest. And I'm very honored you are with us. I'm talking about A.V. Geyer, Geyer from Nevada, Las Vegas. And you have so many, uh, I just say string to your <laughs> life. Many, many you lives. Are a certificate yoga therapist, that's for sure. You have a beautiful Java Maya yoga place and movement, and you have so many activities and followers. And um, as well, Ayurvedic therapist. Right. So would you like to tell a more little bit about you? And then we start with education. Yeah, great. And probably Ayurvedic approach and um, therapy. Please welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be here, and uh, I, I I feel what you're doing and and what your team is doing is just exquisite and so so important. Um, I I am certified yoga therapist. I I am a Ayurvedic wellness counselor and uh, teach Ayurveda and um, the whole holistic uh, world is is very much my world now. Um, but that's not always the case. Um, I come from a very strong corporate background, but um, decided that for, for health reasons, it was not good. Um, it's also, which will segue into the education, it's also uh, corporate life is very, very competitive and it's very stressful. And I feel that that's just not- Correct. Not correct. It's, it's yes, and in many countries around the world, that's an interesting story you have. Yeah, thank you. Amazing. <laughs> so I know, I know you Why are you concerned about education in the state, especially after 2020 that has been such a hard year? Well, I think um, it's interesting. Uh, interesting year, but it was hard on us. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. And, and I think it was very interesting that, um, that actually what COVID has brought out in this country anyway is the tremendous um, difference um, in, in, uh, in cultures and in income-based families uh, because everyone had to be on the computer, everybody had to be learning through the computer and many, 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 many young people did not have those skills. Um, so it became very, very difficult. And I think uh, when, when I think of education, I really think of Krishnamurti, um, who wrote so many years ago this beautiful book called On Education. Um, and it's a series of lectures that he gave about education. And he, he writes, he really says, what is education? What is the purpose? And he says, the purpose, the aim and drive of the schools is to equip the child with the most excellent technology uh, techn technological proficiency so that he may function, he, she, may function with clarity and efficiency in the modern, modern world. And far more important is to create the right climate so that the child may develop fully as a complete human being. And this means I giving him the it. opportunity complete to flower. Human being. And he says to live is to be related. There is no right relationship to anything if there is not the right relationship for beauty, for a response to nature, to music and to art and to highly developed aesthetic senses. Um, and he really, he goes on. I mean, it's just, just, it's just so beautiful. You know, how can we help that boy or girl to be complete, to be free completely and yet highly disciplined not through fear, not through conformity, nor partially free, but completely free and yet highly disciplined at the same time. And he really talks about the importance of being able to go in to really understand who you are as an individual, what your passions are, and be able to be in an environment where the teachers are so in tune with the children that they're able to help blossom that particular child in whatever it is that they that they you know do. Um, I think I shared with you that I went to um, English boarding school. I, I was born in New York City and, and moved to England when I was 10 years old with my family. And I was sent to an English boarding school. And I look back on that time now 
And I realized that it took me many, many years to undo what oh. I had been taught there. And that's not to say that the school was not an excellent school. It was from the, per from the perspective, and we're talking 1950s oh, here. <laughs> we're talking a long time ago. But from the point of view of education, as far as, um, as, as the education was known at that time, it was, it was very good. The teachers were very, very good. But I, I, because I was American, I was already two years behind the European schools, all right? I had not taken Latin, I had not taken calculus. So I was behind in every subject to begin with. Um, and uh, the other thing is I really found it very hard to study. Um, my mind was always somewhere else. <laughs> so memorizing things and, and that sort of, it was very difficult for me. So I really, I really felt when I was thinking about what to say today, I, I really realized that I spent a major part of my life thinking that I was not good enough, that I was oh, unworthy, that I was stupid, that I was dumb, whatever. Um, and, and, and that all came from that, that sort of pressure of, of com competition at school, that pressure of having to learn something and do well with your school and get your marks and just that constant sort of, you know, trying to drive to move forward. Um, I, I believe that that drive can be there when the child is doing what they want to be doing. And I don't mean that that's, I, I, think, I think how you're presenting it with, with P3000 is, is so beautiful. Um, there is discipline, you know, they're, they're, your program is just outstanding. Um, and I've, I feel that in order for, um, I was sharing with you before we, before we started that the, the corporate life for me, it was, I, I worked with tremendous people. I, I, I just had wonderful, wonderful people that I was working with. But the pressure, um, the, it was all about the bottom line. And it was very, very difficult mm -hmm. to, to not be stressed by that because there was just, you had to do well because if you didn't do well, you were out of a job and then what are you gonna do with your family? So it became very difficult. So I think that the change has to happen at this level, at the, at the child's level where, where that competition is not there, where the child is able to blossom and develop and become this full human being and be able to give and work without all of that other stuff around. I, I just think it's so harmful. And I, it's going to take a long time. I, I certainly not in my lifetime am I going to see it. No, I, mean, I hope not. I hope not. Yeah. This is so urgent. It's yeah. so urgent. Well, and, I, and I, it's I, so basic as well. Oh my God. It is. It is. And it's, but it is a new way of thinking. Um, my husband is quite is, is about 11 years older than I am and, and I, I, it's very hard for, for him to grasp some of these ideas because he, he doesn't think they're right. Uh, it's not that he's not thinking about it. He's very, um, mm. he, he's a thinker. <laughs> um, but there's, there's a way that that, um, that generation has, has been brought up and they feel that's the way to do it, to push through no matter what. And that it, that's true. Yeah, the complete shift of culture. Sometimes we say a pedagogic uh, culture. We, we want right. it's like to set up a, a new. It's completely yes, a new shift of paradigms. But the children and the young people are ready. So that's yeah. the good uh, the good thing. They are. They that's are. the good news, and um, they or oh, they 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 grab it. I yeah. mean, they, they are very smart, they and do. they know they have another vision of life too, another priority. Right, is right. To live at the fullest and so maybe, well, we will see those change. We we'll do our so. part and we will see the future, but uh, I'm very optimistic. What's interesting. Because the inner nature of the human being want that. Right, right. The, the quote was so beautiful from Krishnamurti. If you want to send me, we can put it in description and people can have it because oh, all right, it's great. very yes. nice. It's yeah. so beautiful. Thank it's beautiful. you. It's beautiful. And I, I, I realized that really the, when, you, when you think about yoga, most people think about the, the actual exercise part of yoga. Yoga actually is something completely different. <laughs> And that's you a want, very, would you like to talk about it, dear Abby? Like the yeah. Ayurvedic yoga and all the richness and the beautiful. 
very small part of yoga and, and yoga really starts if, if you're going to learn classically in India, uh -huh. you start with something called the yamas and niyamas, which are really um, almost like codes of ethics, the things that are really the right thing to do as a human being, the things that we need to stay away from as a human being. And when you can live that way, you're really living a life of what they call sat vritti. Um, sat means truthful and pure, and the vritti is the Sat, would you let me spit for us? Sat. S-A-T-V-R-I-T-T-I. -T -T -I. Can I put it in chat? Remember, we are viewers from all, all around the world, so we have to help with the English. There you go. Sat Thank you. So sat is truthful and pure and vritti is the behavior. Um, and there's the mental savriti, which is um, a discrimination with our actions, um, keeping our mind calm and tranquil, um, being able to really neutralize emotions. So it's really emotional intelligence in a sense where we learn how to respond rather than react. So you're not working from your emotions, you're really working from that very stable core. Um, and then the social savriti, which is really respecting the elders. Um, I don't know, speaking kindly to people, really being very aware of our communication and the words that yes. we use, right? You know, um, I mean, I remember, Please. oh my goodness, as the only American in a boarding school in England, it was fierce. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it made so Let much me read fun for of our it. viewers. It's sat vriti. Sat means truthful and pure, and vriti is behavior. Sat S A T vriti V R E uh, no I T T I vriti right. is behavior. Right. Thank you. Right. Please, sorry, I interrupted. Oh, that's okay. Um, so they have the mental savriti, and then you have the social savriti, which is really our 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 behavior in society. You know that we we want to be humble, we want to be strong, and you really cannot be humble if you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you have to have knowledge to be humble. It really is true. Otherwise, you get frustrated because you know you don't know what you're talking about, and then you get frustrated and you get angry. So knowledge is, of course, very important. Um, being kind to the animals, um, supporting others, you know. Um, then you have the dharmic, what we call dharmic um, savriti, which is really, um, which is very much what you're, what the schooling is that that you're talking about, the education that you're talking about, which is about having a belief, having a um, having a, a purpose, and really being able to find that purpose. Um, I know a young man of about 40 right now, he's 40 years old, and mm -hmm. he's not found his purpose yet. And it's, it, especially now with COVID, it's just become so difficult. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's, and I see the struggle, you know, I see that, I see the desire to be able to support his loved ones in a better way than he is right now, mainly because he doesn't have that, that purpose yet. He doesn't know He's so good at so many things, um, but he hasn't settled on one, you know? So it's so interesting. So, and then of course, you know, to be able to really see the, the, the beautiful nature in each other person, we all have what we call a Buddha nature. Maybe you want to call it that, or maybe you want to call it a, um, um, a godliness, whatever, however you want to phrase that. Um, but there's, everybody has a very beautiful nature and we just need to be able to respond to that in a person and that way they respond back to us in the same way. And this is all what you're teaching, you know? So it's, um, it's beautiful. So yoga is very much about the mind and Ayurveda is all about the body. So, you know, it's talking about diet, it's talking about lifestyle, and it's mm -hmm. talking about how each one of us is so unique. So really trying to understand, you know, we are all five elements, the, uh, everything outside of us is five elements, everything inside of us is five elements. So when we can understand the, um, 
mm, the predominant element, element or elements in our body, we begin to understand how to eat. We begin to understand what activity is best, you know. Um, it's a beautiful science. It's a beautiful way of life and beautiful way of, um, of, of, of look, looking at things. Um, and I feel that the, the education that you are, um, that you are giving, that you are, um, that you found <laughs> in a sense, <laughs> and all the team, teamwork that you have is, is just exquisite. It's really preparing the child to really understand life. No, but I mean, so impressed and amazed now because everything you said, it, it, that's, that's the core of P3000, Education 3000. It's not new. It's, it's as old as a human being and life itself and creation itself. This is so beautiful. Thank you for, now I can, oh, I have response. I can see I mean, this <laughs> continuity right. because of the essence. Yeah. Now we have to do it. That's yeah. to put in practice and change them. Um, education system all around the world, but with this consciousness. And um, what a beautiful task. It is, it is. Thank and you I, to I, remind I, me too. Yeah, I applaud you. I, I really, I applaud you and all those that are working with you directly. Um, it just, it's awesome. And I hope I can support in some small way here in the States, yeah. Dear Abby, being from the cooperating Cooperating, cooperative work, or world, I would say. What would be your message? Usually it's a message to educators and to parents, but what did you say to the enterprise and to the CEOs? And all well, it's very things? interesting. You had a guest. That would on. be interesting because education starts over there too. Yeah. You had a guest on Justine Shelton and her husband, Alan Shelton, Yes. teaches spirituality for companies. And it's really, really very interesting. And I actually had him on a guest of, on my talk show, which is Jiva Maya Yoga Wisdom Talks. Um, and it was fascinating. And I really feel that corporations have, again, it's, it's, it's moving into that whole thing where we are right now, that darkness of greed, of, of anger, of trying to be big, of trying to monopolize, of trying to but it's just everything has to be bigger and better. And that is not, it's just not, it's just not the way to go. <laughs> it's incorrect. And you're, it's, it's, and we all know this and it's, it's kind of like, well, we're there now. So what do we do? Um, and how do we get out of this? And I, I feel that, you know, people like Alan and people like yourself and myself who are doing this work and Justine as well, and many others that we know, um, really trying to turn that that way of thinking around um, so that it's not about the bottom line. It's really about, oh, wait a minute, is this the right decision for the big picture, for the entire planet? Is this the right decision? Mm -hmm. you no, know, and I, I, I just feel that we've kind of gotten a, a little bit away from that. I, I feel that greed actually is probably one of the biggest problems right now, at least in this country. I don't know about other countries, but uh, mm -hmm. over here, definitely. And um, you can see it everywhere. You can see politicians trying to stay in office. Uh, so they just start giving money away, uh, mm -hmm. money that they don't even have to give away just because they want to stay in office. They want to mm -hmm. keep their beautiful home. They, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous. So, you know, that, that has to change. I think it is slowly, I, I really do. Um, but as but as you and I know, it really has to tra start with the children now because it's um, it's almost too late for some of those people. Um, it, there's they're so so far into that mm -hmm. other world that they don't even think that they're doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it's wrong; it's just that it's misguided. It's a wrong action from mm -hmm. that point of view. Yeah, and it belongs to an old cycle. Now we are yeah. in the new cycle and the children, they definitely are ready from what I see. Yeah. Thank you so much. And Thank we you. definitely keep in touch. Oh, you have talks as well, remember? Jivana Maya well. Yoga Talks. So when or, is, um, it's once a month, when is it? So we well, can invite a little our bit right now, but definitely on Wednesday afternoon for anyone that might be listening to this, um, I will be interviewing Noemi and we'll be um, giving the second talk um, about education 3000 P 3000. 
so that we can try to show um, the people, um, mostly in this country, uh, USA, um, how they can really begin with this whole new paradigm um, as, a, as a mother, um, as a teacher, um, even as an aunt or uncle or whatever, but how they can start to bring this, this new way of thinking about um, the younger people and their education into their family. So I hope you'll, I hope you'll all join, yeah. yeah. And I know that Noemi will post it, so. Yes, and uh, we will put everything on YouTube anyway. But and thank, thank you, you everybody. Everyone. Thank you, dear Abby. Thank you. And um, let's go on. We stay yeah. tuned, we keep in touch, and oh, we... Yeah are co-building, co-creating something really new and very beautiful. Beautiful. And happy Even time. though with Ayurvedic yeah. yoga, it's not that new. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. something eternal. It Thank is. you so much. Thank you. Please take care. Bye-bye, right. everybody. Bye. See you soon. Bye.